Hello there Reason people, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a high level overview of the FCB1010 and how I actually utilize it inside of Reason. As you can clearly see, we've got ourselves 10 foot pedals, we've got a couple of little foot pedals here, and we've got a couple of expression pedals, we've got a couple of mini ports on the back and a couple of switches which go out and I'll talk about them a bit later. The premise of this really is, these are actually presets you're, you're selecting, you have 10 banks, so that gives you effectively 100 presets. I will admit, when I first got this and I went through the manual, I was actually quite shocked on how you had to set it up, because it is you really had to click one button, click another button, click this, click that, click that. It was like a bit of a nightmare, but I found a bit of software where we can actually utilize to configure it up. And if it wasn't for that bit of software, I probably wouldn't have actually used this device. And that's the honest truth. It is a nightmare, I think, using <laughs> when you go through this manual of how you set things up, especially if you're going to set up 100 presets. Oh my God, that must be a real nightmare for people to actually do. Let's have a quick look at my actual FCB1010. Here is the unit in question, so if I put my feet on it you get an idea about the size of it. It's very easy obviously to operate. I rather like the spacing of these particular foot pedals because this device is actually tucked way under my desk so I can't see it. So I just do it by feel alone of what I need to do and it works very well. It's a very sturdy device so it doesn't go sliding around or anything. It's got a nice little bit of weight to it but it's obviously not mega mega heavy. Big difference with mine is it actually has a fix my transformer went and I had a spare power supply so I actually wired it directly inside and I bypassed all the transformer stuff I was meant to get another one but I never got round to it I did have a noisy transformer and it had a slight little buzz really annoying because I work late at night you know I'm well into the early mornings if I was ever playing music or doing anything you'd never hear the buzz whatsoever you actually do stuff or you've got TV on or anything you can't actually hear it but when you've got a dead silence here's one of them annoying little buzzes in the background and since I've changed it uh, it's great um, and obviously over the other side we've got our switch and we've got some MIDI cables now you only need MIDI out for it to really work but because I use software to configure this so you can do a, a SysX and dump it up to the PC and then you can pull the data back down from the, to configure it all up you do need obviously an in and out MIDI cable so let's have a look at the software so this is the actual software I use it's an old piece of software but it works really well as I said we've got 10 banks which we can actually select even from this particular program which we'll scroll through in fact, I might leave it on bank because I've got a few things selected. And these are the actual preset values which you can actually set. Now, a preset value actually contains up to five program changes, two CC values if you want, your expression pedals, what they're actually up to. There's a relay switch at the back. What you're going to actually do with that, I don't actually use that. And you can also send out a note. And that is per switch. So when I hit the next switch, I can send out different CC numbers. I can send out different change controls. I can have my expression pedals pointing at different things. As default, what I've done with my expression pedals, I've pointed one to the mod wheel and the other actually to CC11, which is the expression. So obviously inside reason, most device, and I've got that connected to the, what's called the master keyboard. So any device I actually pick up, which honors them, works. So actually setting it up from this kind of view, I find this a little bit slow going through it. There's another view which I really like, but I'll, I'll show that in a second. So under the global settings, you can see we can actually output a different MIDI channel for each control that you wish. So obviously you've, you, this is obviously program change, so you can actually have these going out on different MIDI channels. You can see that most of my things are going out on eight, except for my expression pedals, which go out on one. So I wrote my own little codec file, very, very tiny, literally got a few lines in my codec file, um, my mapping file, which then in reason, because this is obviously mod wheel, any um, device I pick up, works for the mod wheel and if they're configured to use the expression pedal i can also use the expression pedal on there and if it's not configured on the, the expression pedal there's nothing to stop me doing a remote override obviously you can have got some other options here set as well in fact the midi merge should really be off i think it is off when i actually pull my configuration back so what you can do is once it's actually set up live you can obviously transmit and you can actually pull my all my configuration back of my current setup from my FCB, or once I've actually made some changes here, I can push it. So MIDI merge basically is gonna take anything which is coming in the MIDI in and pushes it to the MIDI out. I don't have to worry about that because this device has got its own dedicated in and out ports. Direct select, that's a funny one. I, again, I don't use it. Direct select, if I remember rightly, 
is when you've got that selected and you're under here, if I wanted to go bank, say to bank four, preset nine, you can do it in a way that you hit four and then nine and that sort of takes you directly to it. I use the up and down key, so I'll have to press that four times to get to bank four, which is obviously slower, and then I can press my nine. I tend to work it and I leave it in banks and it's very rarely that I'm switching banks a lot. So maybe in a live ses session, you might say, well, that's fine. You might like it in this mode because you can have it in bank one. That's one song, bank two is a different song, so on and so forth. And we've got a few other options as well. I can't remember what running status is. And these are obviously to do with the switches at the back of how you're actually gonna send the data out the back or not. And then obviously we've got a few other little options about over here. I think default is they send one byte at a time. I found 16 was nice and quick when we hit the transmit that's all to do with transmit and receive the view i like the most is the spreadsheet view it takes a little bit of time to build it up and obviously this is actually expandable so you can obviously expand this going one way and then the other way i think the only sad thing about the spreadsheet view these are all individual so it's not like an excel where i can do something and then really whiz it all the way down but in this view i find it very very quick obviously you can say set your columns if you notice i've actually um, removed Oh, it's on a different screen, sorry. Let me pull that in. As you can see, program change one, two, and three, I've actually excluded from this list. I've just left program change one because I don't actually use it, but I thought I'd leave it there so I never forget about it. And you can say what you want actually to show up on this particular display. I mainly, as I said before, just use bank A. So we we'll go down to bank A because there's more exciting things going on here, as you can see. Now, the way this actually works is because I've got the same CC number, when I press it one, it's going to send out a zero. When I press it again, it's going to send out a 127. If I happen to have two different numbers here, so let's say I had 90 here and I had 91 in here, whatever number you've got here set, every time you hit that button or foot pedal, it's actually going to send that value out. It won't alternate between the two. It sends them both out. So you can send out two CC signals at the same time. As I said, my expression pedal, you can also set the range, which obviously I have full range, and you also you can set out, send out a note if you really, really wish to. Without this, I really wouldn't have probably used that device. This was a, like a, a lifesaver. There's a couple of different programs which actually do it. This happens to be my preferred one. It, as I say, it's old, but it works extremely well. So just before I close this down, you may just want to draw your attention, as you can see, so preset, or bank eight, preset one, you can see I'm sending out CC90, and I've literally gone 91, two, two, three, up to 99, and I've done it for minimum and maximum. In fact, the funny thing is, what I actually do next with it, because of the way I use it in Reason, it, I don't actually need half of these values, but there is one I am actually using it currently as a CC number, which I'm passing through to Reason, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So how am I actually using it in Reason? Well, I do things like application zoom. So this is equivalent of me coming in here, going options, application zoom. You can see it's at 200%. You might not be able to see it's quite small there. So I've actually taken the zoom off my OBS program. So I actually have a button here that if I click on this, this is actually using OBS's zoom. Then obviously that allows me to have the slightly larger text. So you can see what's going on, but you can see now I'm back up 100%. And then even though I've got the applications or OBS zoom on, there's nothing actually stopping me zooming in even further, so which is quite handy for obviously doing the particular videos. Um, I've got other buttons as well, which obviously allow me to tab back to the to back of the rack. I've got another button which will actually bring up the browser. That was a little bit more useful in Reason 12 because obviously it brought up both. So I had another button which in Reason 12 and that I have as, as Control Z, but in this one here, I actually got it configured for F9 so I can actually just bring up that browser very quickly if I want to from a foot pedal. And I also have one more which is for preferences. In fact, I've got a couple more. So I had a big issue with Reason, well, below Reason 13, preferences just wouldn't come up. Um, it had come up once and it disappeared, so it'd come up, and because it took so long to come up, Reason would, would actually pop up on, above it, so it's underneath it, so I either had to move Reason, but it's just quick enough to go edit preferences again to bring it on top, because it's already open, it's very quick to come on top. What I did with that controller is, I'm sending out obviously some MIDI, and I actually pull up um, edit preferences twice, so it did actually always appear on top for me. Reason 13, they fixed that, or I say they fixed that, what they actually fixed, I believe, which was the issue, was I had a very, very slow control services when I was doing anything in my control service, because I have hundreds of them set up. 
Um, so they fix that, um, I worked with them and they fix that, and now I find that's very, very quick to actually come up. And as I say, there's nothing stopping actually passing through something like the CC number, so if I was to go there, and then I'm gonna say I'm gonna zoom out. I can obviously pass CC messages actually through into Reason itself, and we can then, there we go, I've just obviously clicked on the, well, I didn't click on the open, should I say, this is the, um, the see no hands, and I can actually obviously open up my VSTs, a few of my modules. And that's basically how I use it. So how it works is I actually send out some MIDI code. I'm using this very simple script. I actually showed this in my Lua video the other day where I actually create a MIDI aux object and I'm actually capturing the MIDI data coming in. As you can see here, I captured obviously the, the MIDI data, the CC. So when we looked at the spreadsheet and I said, look, it said 91, 92 going up. That's what these numbers are. I then convert it to a very horrible combination like Alt, Control, Shift, One. I could push it straight out to Reason itself, but I actually do this horrible combination because then I use something called Auto Hotkey, and I've configured then Auto Hotkey because it's got a, some lovely features in it. So I can say, if Reason's running, then I will send the tab out. If Reason's not running, then it doesn't convert this to any other key. So it don't affect any other kind of application, but I can also stack it as well. So I am using it, as I said, OBS, I use on a few of the keys as well. And the only other thing I've actually ever used this for is um, voltage modular, but 99.5% of the time, I'm actually using it in this configuration of how I control Reason itself. How I kind of remember it, when I actually file my script off, I have this simple little cheat sheet what comes up just to remind me of how I got things configured. To be honest, I don't need this now, and I can just see, oh, I've done a typo, that should say R13. So obviously in Reason 13, where you can bring up that browser, whereas previous versions of Reason, I was doing a Control Z with it. So as I said, I was gonna keep this nice and short. Actually, one thing I was gonna quickly show, a bit more closely maybe, is the back end of the actual device. <laughs> as you say, I haven't got that there. But as I say, basic MIDI in, MIDI out, and as you can see, it says through on it. You can obviously, from that option you saw earlier, you can actually turn that on and off. And I say these two switches, then obviously you can go off to your hardware and control them as well. I have no problems releasing my codec file and even this kind of script as well. So if you wish to, if you have one and you haven't got it set up like this and it's something you might be interested in, you're more than welcome to download that. I'll make sure I put everything in the description for you. So that really just leaves me to say, um, thank you for watching and bye for now.